A Jesus kid, I'm a Jesus kid. I believe the good news, so I'm a Jesus kid. A Jesus kid, I'm a Jesus kid. God can use me too, cause I'm a Jesus kid. A Jesus kid, I'm a Jesus kid. I believe the good news, so I'm a Jesus kid. A Jesus kid, I'm a Jesus kid. God can use me too, cause I'm a Jesus kid. A Jesus kid, I'm a Jesus kid. I believe the good news, so I'm a Jesus kid. A Jesus kid. Well, hi, boys and girls. Pastor Steve here. Welcome to Kids Church. Well, today, boys and girls, we're going to continue our study in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16, learning about walking in the Spirit, how to walk and live in the Spirit. And then we're going to turn to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 and learn about meditating on things that are lovely. So make sure to grab your Bibles, and I'll see you in just a few minutes. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good, report if there is any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole You are here, moving in the midst. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. Touching every heart, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you. For you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. For you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light. 
light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, that is who you are. 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 stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop never stop working even when i don't see it you working even when i don't feel it you working you never stop you never stop working you never stop oh you never stop working waymaker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are for you are waymaker worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are 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 that is who you are, that is who you are. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Galatians 5.16 Welcome back everyone! Do you have your Bibles with you? Good. Before we continue learning about what it means to walk in the Spirit and sow to the Spirit, why don't we pray and ask the Lord to bless our time? So let's bow our heads and let's close our eyes. Dear Jesus, we thank you again for today, Lord. We thank you that we have this privilege and this opportunity to open up our word to learn more of you, to hear from you. And we just pray right now, Lord Jesus, that you would prepare our hearts to hear from you. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for loving us and always providing for us, for being so faithful. And Lord, for desiring to have that personal relationship with us. And Lord, may that be our desire too, to have a personal relationship with you. And so may you bless our time now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, boys and girls, do you remember our memory verse? The one that we looked at early on? Remember from Galatians 5.16? Well, let's look at it one more time together. It says, I say then, Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Remember in our study last week, boys and girls, we talked about walking, and walking referred to someone's manner of life, the way that they live. And remember how we talked about when we, when we walk in the Spirit, we allow God to rule over our minds and to control our thoughts. And we talked about how important it was for us to feed upon spiritual food, to feed our bodies spiritual things. And remember, we talked about how if we program our minds with spiritual things, what comes out of our lives? That's right, the Spirit comes out of our lives. We see the evidence 
or the fruit we are reaping to those things that we sow. And remember, boys and girls, that when we walk in the Spirit, we have that lovely, wonderful fellowship with God. And we're able to experience God's love and His joy and His peace and His patience. And we have His strength and His power over the things of the flesh. And today we're going to continue talking about walking in the Spirit. Boys and girls, when God created us, He created us in three parts. He created us with a body, with a mind, and with a spirit. And did you know that we're basically a spirit? We are just living inside of a body that possesses a mind or a conscience? Now, boys and girls, our mind, remember we talk about the choices that we have. So our mind is either going to be controlled by fleshly desires. We have a choice to do things man's way, or it's going to be controlled by spiritual desires, doing things God's way. And if we live after the flesh, if we give in to the desires and the passions of the flesh, the result's going to be we are going to be carnally minded. We're going to be thinking about the things of the world, the things that have no importance, the things that are going to die, the things that are going to cause us to be separated from God for all of eternity. The Apostle Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5 that we are to bring every thought into captivity, into the obedience of Christ. You see, boys and girls, when we find our minds absorbed with the things of the flesh, it's important to take control over those things and say, I don't want to think about those things. Boys and girls, what we put into our hearts, what we put into our minds, come out of our lives. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 15 and verse 19, for out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts. What we put in to our lives, boys and girls, is what is going to come out. And we have a choice. We have a choice to think about those bad things, or we have a choice to think about something else on those good things, good things that are pleasing to the Lord. And in order for us to do that, boys and girls, we need to turn our minds to Jesus. Why don't we get into the scriptures? Why don't we get into God's word and see what the Bible says? See what the Bible says about us and our desire to live in the spirit. Do you want to live in the spirit, boys and girls? I sure do. Do you want to walk in the spirit? I do. And the Bible tells us, boys and girls, that if we walk in the Spirit, if we live in the Spirit, we're not going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. And so it's important to walk in the Spirit, boys and girls. Let's look at some of the verses that relate to this. What do these verses say about walking in the Spirit? Romans 8.14 says, For as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Boys and girls, when we walk in the Spirit and the Spirit is the one that's leading us, we can know that we are God's sons. Romans chapter 8 and verse 16 tells us that the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Isn't it great to know, boys and girls, that we are children of God by the Spirit of God? When we're walking in God's Spirit, our Spirit agrees with His Spirit because we're on the same page. We know that we are His. In 1 John chapter 4 and verse 13, it says, And He is in us because He has given us His Spirit. Boys and girls, when His Spirit is in us, we are His. We are His children. 
In Romans chapter 8 and verse 26, it says this. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession with us with groanings which cannot be uttered. How awesome is that, boys and girls? When we don't know what to pray or how to pray something, guess what? The Spirit is praying for us. Do you know, boys and girls, that the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18 that we should pray with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. We should be praying all the time. And when we don't know what to say or how to say it, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is praying for us. Now, boys and girls, let's look at some of God's promises. I love the promises of God. Do you know that when God makes a promise, he doesn't break it? When he says that he's going to do something, that means he's going to do it. And the Bible is full of his promises. One of his promises we find in Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. It says, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Now, boys and girls, this doesn't mean that good things are going to happen to you all the time. As a matter of fact, there are bad things that happen in our lives, aren't there? Probably you've experienced some bad things in your lives. But the Bible here is telling us that those bad things, when they happen, guess what? God can take them and make them work for good. Well, how does God do that? Well, boys and girls, God is perfect in all of his ways, and God can do anything. Do you remember the story of Joseph back in the book of Genesis? Remember, Joseph had his father, Jacob, who loved him so much. He gave him a coat of many colors, and his brothers got so jealous of Joseph that one day they pretended that Joseph was dead, and they threw him into a pit. And they took his coat off of him, and they covered it in blood, and they went back and told his dad, Jacob, that Joseph had been killed. And then Joseph was sold into slavery. And then Joseph was sold to the Egyptians, an Egyptian by the name of Potiphar. And then remember, Joseph was thrown into prison. Now that doesn't sound like a good life, does it? But you know what, boys and girls? God had a plan for Joseph's life. And even though it was bad and yucky and ugly, God worked it out for good. Do you remember what happened to Joseph? While he was in prison, there was two men, two men from the Pharaoh's court that were thrown into prison, the butler and the baker. And they both had dreams, didn't they? And they came to Joseph. And they shared their dreams with Joseph, and Joseph interpreted their dreams. Said the butler was going to be restored, but the baker, he was going to die. And both of those dreams came true, just like Joseph had said. And God is the one that gave Joseph those interpretations. And Joseph told the butler, he said, remember me when you leave. And it was a little while later that Pharaoh had a dream. And the butler remembered. He remembered Jacob. He remembered Joseph. The butler remembered Joseph and those things that Joseph had told him while he was in prison. And the Pharaoh called Joseph out of prison. And Joseph became second in command of all of Egypt. Do you remember that? And the famine that was over the whole world, Joseph helped feed the people of Egypt and feed the people of the world just like his brothers when they came to him. And in Genesis chapter 50 and verse 20, Joseph is talking to his brothers and says, what you guys meant for evil, God 
meant for good. You see, boys and girls, God can take a bad situation and use it for good. We're to remember in Psalm chapter 46, verses 1 and 2, it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. Even though the mountains are going to be removed and the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, we don't have to fear because God is with us. Even though those bad things may happen, God's going to turn them and work them for our good. And do you know, boys and girls, that even though the worst of the worst things may happen, even though we may die or someone that we love very close to us may die, if they know Jesus, if we know Jesus, we have a, an even greater promise. He tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1 that if our earthly ten, if this body is destroyed, we have something better from God. A house, a body that's not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. You see, boys and girls, even though our bodies may die here on earth, we are going to live forever with him. He says that those things that are bad, God can take and work them for good. Boys and girls, that's why it's important to know God's word. That's why it's important to learn God's word. Because when we do, boys and girls, it helps us to walk in his spirit. It helps us to go God's way instead of our own way. God's way instead of man's way. Remember, in Psalm 119, verse 105, it tells us that his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. God's word helps direct us where we are to go, helps direct us to walk in his spirit. And so, boys and girls, I have a question for you. What do you think is the key to walking in the spirit? What's the key to walking in the spirit? Let's look at Luke chapter 11, verses 5 through 13, and I think we're going to find the key to walking in the Spirit. Luke chapter 11 and verse 5 says, And he said to them, Which of you shall have a friend? And go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, send me three loaves. For a friend of mine has come to me on this journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, Do not trouble me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you. I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be open to you. Let's stop just a second, boys and girls, and let's consider something. You see, these words, ask, seek, and knock, in their original language, boys and girls, when it was written, it was written as the present tense. So what it means, it means to keep asking, to keep seeking, to keep knocking. And that's why in verse 8, it says, because of his persistence, your friend, you're going to rise and give as many as he needs. Because why? He kept asking. He kept seeking. He kept knocking. Let's continue with Luke chapter 11. And in verse 10, it says, for everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it will be open. If a son asks for bread from a father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, Will he offer him a scorpion? 
If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? You see, boys and girls, in the rest of this passage of Scripture, it's telling us those who ask are going to receive. Those who seek are going to find. Those who knock, the door is going to be open. And he says, if any of you, if any of you have any children, if you have a son and asks any father for anything, are you going to give your children something good or something bad? It doesn't matter if you're walking with the Lord or if you're not walking with the Lord. Even those that don't walk with God, even those that are evil, they're not going to give their children bad things. They're going to give them good things. And then he says, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And so, boys and girls, what is the key to walking in the Spirit? The key to walking in the Spirit is to keep asking, to keep asking throughout the day. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3, it says, Call to me and I will answer you. Boys and girls, when we call out to God, guess what? He is going to answer us. And when we call out to him, boys and girls, we can call out to him with confidence. That's what Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 tells us. It says, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. Come with confidence. Come with expectance, knowing that when we ask, he's going to give. And that's what 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15 tells us. It says, now this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions, the things that we request, that we have asked of him. Boys and girls, we need to keep asking throughout the day for his spirit. Not only do we need to keep asking, but we need to keep seeking. Psalm 27 verse 8 says, seek my face. It says, your face, Lord, I will seek. We need to seek him continually throughout the day. In Psalm 105 and verse 4, it says, Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face evermore. And in Isaiah 55 and verse 6, boys and girls, it says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. We are to keep seeking. We are to keep asking. What else are we to do, boys and girls? That's right. We are to keep knocking. We're continually to go to God. And boys and girls, do you know that when we go to God, when we ask, we seek, we knock, God is going to give us his grace each and every single day, the grace and the mercies that we need to live the life in the spirit, to walk in the spirit. And each day God's going to give us his direction and his strength for us to do what God wants us to do. Boys and girls, our Heavenly Father, God, He desires that we be filled with His Spirit. And so, boys and girls, what is the key to walking in the Spirit? It's three things. We need to keep asking Keep seeking. And what's the last one? Keep knocking. Well, hello, ladies and lassies. It's me, Mr. Wallace, again. It's splendid to see you. We've been learning about walking in the spirit, so let's walk on over to our first activity and connect some dots. Oh, the one's going to the two. Up, up, up. Down the four, five, eight, eight, eight. 
Hmm. I have absolutely no idea what this is. I think that's an L. That's definitely an L. Up and around, over, over. Oh, that's a knee. Down. Another L? No, no, no. Ah, yes, lovely. The word lovely means inner beauty. And Pastor Steve will tell us all about it very soon. Well, hi, boys and girls. Welcome back. Let's practice our theme verse together. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. It says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Philippians 4, 8. Great job, everyone. Well, so far, we've looked at what it means to meditate on things that are true, noble, just, and pure. What is something that we've learned that is truth, boys and girls? Well, God's word is truth, isn't it? And Jesus is the truth. What about noble? Noble is something that is great or excellent. And remember, we are to set our minds on those things that are above. What about the things that are just, boys and girls? What is that? Do you remember? It's God's standards. And where do we find God's standards for how to live, boys and girls? That's right, in his word. Now, what about what we learned last week? Those things that are pure. Do you remember what that is? Pure means unable to find any fault without sin. And so, boys and girls, true, noble, just, pure? Well, let's look at what it means to meditate on things that are lovely. Now, the word lovely, boys and girls, is a word that was used many, many years ago, and we don't really understand its full meaning. Lovely, the word lovely can be termed as very admirable or inner beauty. Now, there are people and there are things that may not be very beautiful to look at on the outside, but we admire them because of their inner beauty. Now, I want you to take a look at your screen, boys and girls, and you see this rock? What's so special about this rock? Not much, huh? It looks like any ordinary plain rock. But boys and girls, on the inside of that rock is something very special. On the inside of that rock is a diamond. On the outside, it may not look like anything special. It may not look beautiful. But on the inside, oh, boys and girls, isn't that precious? That rock has inner beauty. And do you know that God is very concerned about our inner loveliness, our inner beauty. As a matter of fact, in 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 7, it says, The Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And in this passage of scripture, boys and girls, God had told Samuel to go to the house of Jesse to anoint the next king of Israel. You see, Saul, who was the king of Israel at this time, had been rejected by the Lord. The Lord had taken away Saul from being king, and there was to be someone else to be king. And so Samuel went to the house of Jesse. And Jesse had all of these sons. And that very first son, Samuel looked at him and was like, oh, this has to be it. Look at him. But God told Samuel, it's not 
what he looks like on the outside. It's what he looks like on the inside. It's what is the matter of his heart. And so Samuel went from one son of Jesse to the next son, to the next, and to the next until he finally came to David. And we all know about David, don't we, boys and girls? David became the second king of Israel. And as a matter of fact, the Bible tells us later on that David was a man after God's own heart. You see, boys and girls, it's not what we look like on the outside that counts to God. It's what we look like on the inside. What is our heart? Is our heart like that stone, hard and rigid? Or is it what's like on the inside of that stone, a precious, precious jewel? Truly, an admirable person is one that lives their life in a way that is pleasing to God. Boys and girls, are you living your life in a way that's pleasing to God? I want to live my life that way. And boys and girls, the only way to live our lives in a way that's pleasing to God is to do what he tells us to do in his word, to walk and to live in the spirit. You see, we look at David and Samuel and all of these people who have gone before us and we see all of the good things that came out of their lives. But boys and girls, do you know why we're able to see these things? Because they abided or they walked with God. You see, in John chapter 15, boys and girls, verses 4 and 5, it says, Abide in me, live in me, and I in you. It says, As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me, unless you are living and walking with God. And Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Boys and girls, I want to live like this. I want to abide in him. I want to live in him. Do you? I sure hope so, boys and girls. I hope that each of us want to live in the Spirit. I pray that each of us desire to walk in the Spirit. And over the last few weeks, boys and girls, we've been looking at Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, and maybe some of you have memorized it, and if you have, great job. If you have it, I would encourage you, continue looking and reading at this verse so you can memorize it. And do you know that this verse, when we memorize it, boys and girls, this is going to help us sow good things into our lives so that we can live a life that is pleasing to the Lord? In fact, boys and girls, do you know that we can use Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 as a checklist for our thought life? Do you know that we can look at all of these things that Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 tells us to meditate on and use them for our own lives? Whatever we think about, boys and girls, we can ask ourselves, is it true? And if it's true, guess what we should be doing? That's right, meditating on it. Is it noble or is it honest? And if it's honest, guess what? We should be meditating on it. We can ask ourselves, is it just? Is it right before the Lord? And if it's right before the Lord, guess what? We can meditate or we can think about it. Is it pure? Is it wholesome? Is there any sin in it? And if there's not, boys and girls, guess what? Yes, we can meditate on it. Is it lovely? Is it admirable? Is there inner beauty? Does it have a good 
report? Is there a good reputation associated with it? Does it build us up? If it does, meditate on it. Is it virtuous, upright, or righteous? Meditate on it. Is it praiseworthy? Is it worth sharing with others? Boys and girls, if it's true, if it's honest, if it's just, if it's pure, if it's lovely, if it has a good report, if it's virtuous, if it's praiseworthy, boys and girls, meditate on it. Think on these things. And do you know, boys and girls, that when we think on those things that are lovely and admirable and of good report and virtuous, instead of thinking about or meditating on bad things, guess what we're doing? That's right, we're sowing good seeds into our lives. That, boys and girls, is such an awesome and amazing thing. And do you know, boys and girls, that is what God wants us to do? Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16 says, I say then, walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And how do we walk and live in the Spirit, boys and girls? By meditating on the things that are true and noble, and just, and pure, and lovely, and those things that are good report, and those things that are virtuous, and those things that are praiseworthy. Boys and girls, may we continue to walk and live in His Spirit. But as we do, boys and girls, we need to ask Him for His help. Why don't we do that right now, boys and girls? Why don't we ask God to help us and to give us his strength so that way we can walk and live in his spirit each and every day? Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for the things, God, that you have given to us, the instructions that you have given to us on how we are to live our lives. Lord, your word helps us to live and to walk in the spirit. But as we read today, Lord, that apart from you, we can't do it. And so, Lord, we need your strength. We need your guidance, your power, and your direction to walk each and every day in your spirit. And so, Lord, may you help us. May you help us walk and live as you would have us to live. Lord, help us to discipline our bodies. Lord, to be able to open up your word every day, to have that personal and close relationship with you. And Lord, as you speak to our hearts, Lord, may we respond. May our lives be so filled with your spirit, Lord, that everyone around us sees you in us. Lord, we thank you, God, for walking with us. We thank you, Lord, for living within us. And we thank you, Lord, for giving us the strength and the power to live for you. Lord, help us each and every single day, Father, to live for you. Again, Jesus, thank you for the time that you've given to us. May you continue to go before us. May you continue to use our lives to glorify you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I'm back. Let's go to our second activity. Oh, oh, this looks like some spy decoding. Let's see if we can figure this one out. Let's look at the letters and the numbers that match and see if we can decode the meaning of this. Oh, the first, the seven, the G, nine, I, V, E, 25 is Y, 15 is O, U, R, 
live your life. Yeah, life. Five is an E. Twenty is a T. Fifteen is O again. Oh, the ten is a J. Five is an E. S U S. Jesus, give your life to Jesus. It is of the utmost importance to give your life to him. I know I have. Have you? Well, I had a fantastic time today doing these activities with you. I hope to be back very soon to learn more about God with all of you. Goodbye!